Howdy. I'm Wayne Scherner from the Bell County Master Gardener Association, and today we're going to talk about growing blueberries in Central Texas. Let me tell you a little story first uh, as to why I got interested in growing blueberries. In 2004, I bought some blueberry plants, planted them in the ground, watered them, fertilized them, and over the next 11 years, didn't get a single blueberry. When I took the Master Gardener course in 2015, I learned why. And today we're going to share that information to help you understand what you need to do in order to successfully grow blueberries in Central Texas. One of the most important things is choosing the right variety of blueberry. In Texas, we grow blueberries that are all in the rabbit eye family. That's different than what might grow in the northern states. And, and so it's important that you select the rabbit, rabbit eye variety and or family. And in that rabbit eye family, there are multiple different varieties. <clears throat> the main difference between the different varieties has to do with something called chill hours the chill hours requirement. Chill hours are defined as the number of hours in a year where the temperature is between 32 and 45. If you, and in Bell County, our chill hours average is 700 chill hours per year. There's a range of plus or minus 150. So between 550 and 850 chill hours is a variety of plants that we want to select. The chill hours define when the plant is going to come out of dormancy. If you have a plant that has a lower chill hours requirement than what our area has, once that those chill hours have been achieved, that plant is going to start coming out of dormancy. For example, if you plant something that has a 400 chill hours requirement, as soon as we've reached 400 chill hours in that year, it's going to start coming out of dormancy. But because our chill hours average is so much higher, there's a high risk that once it comes out of dormancy and starts to flower, we're going to have another freeze and that will destroy the blossoms on the plant. If on the other hand you have a chill hours requirement that is much higher than what ours is, it will, until you reach those number of chill hours, the plant's not going to come out of dormancy. So even though the plant may grow, have lots of greenery and grow in height, it will never come out of dormancy for flowering. And so you, you won't get any berries because the chill hours requirement is too high. So again, for Bell County, our chill hours requirement, uh, the plants we select should have a chill hours requirement between 550 and 850. That's a pretty wide range. Um, and that's and, and we're actually in a fairly narrow strip that has that requirement. To the, to the north of us, uh, starting at McLennan County, their chill hours requirement is about 100 hours higher. To the south of us, Travis County uh, is the beginning of that. The chill hours requirement averages 100 hours less than ours and so again not a very wide band there there are probably six or seven different bands of chill hours in the state of texas and one of the resources that we're going to give you um, at the end of this video will allow you to see what the chill hours uh, bands are for different parts of texas and also the varieties and their chill hour requirements that will help you select the right plant. If you don't select the right plant, you're going to be frustrated. 
the next most important thing is the growing medium that you use for growing blueberries. Blueberries require an acid soil. They grow best in a soil with a pH between 4.5 and 5.5. That was why my blueberries didn't produce any fruit for the 11 years before I became, that I had them planted before I became a master gardener. My native soil has a pH of almost eight. That's a thousand times more alkaline than what my, what blueberry plants prefer. Texas A&M says that you can grow blueberries in pure peat moss. I amend that a little bit because the root structure of blueberries is a fibrous root structure. They f will form a fibrous mat. They don't have the typical roots that can take up nutrients through the water. They require mycorrhizal to bring the nutrients into that fibrous root mass. Peat moss doesn't have any of that. And so that's why I add some compost to give me that. The other thing is if you use an organic fertilizer, that also requires microbes in order to break that fertilizer down so that the plant can use it. And if you just use pure peat moss, you won't get that. Some people recommend peat moss mixed with uh, pine bark, thinking that the pine bark will help keep it more acidic. That's not really true. Uh, once, once pine bark or pine needles or anything like that have dried, they're pretty much neutral pH. So the formula that I have settled on and has proven successful for me uses peat moss, coarse vermiculite, and compost. And I use four parts of peat moss, one part compost, and one part coarse vermiculite. The reason I use coarse vermiculite is it has a, 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 a property called cation exchange capacity that helps hold nutrients into the mix. And so I don't want all my nutrients to just flush through uh, when it rains or when there's a, when there's a storm um, or when you irrigate. If you, if you, again, our native soil has a high pH. Most of Bell County is probably between 7.5 and 8 or above. If you try to amend that native soil using peat moss, digging that into your native soil, it will make your native soil slightly acidic for about a month. And then it will be overcome by the vast amounts of limestone that we have below our soil and it will go back to its native pH. And so I have found it best to grow blueberries in a raised bed on, so I'm not using any of my native soil. And in that raised bed I put, again I put four parts peat moss, one part compost, and one part coarse vermiculite. On the compost, I try to avoid a single source compost. Different composts are going to have different nutrient levels and I want to avoid having a deficiency. And so I mix compost from uh, three, four, five different types of compost and only one of those should be an animal manure based compost, either cow manure compost, uh, chicken manure compost, turkey manure compost, even mushroom compost, which is made, in, usually made with either horse manure or chicken manure compost. Uh, 